Most people, when they shoot 9mm, shoot something like this. PMC Bronze, 115 grain, advertised velocity of 1150 feet per second, pretty standard fare. Well, throughout all of our testing and our what's for dinner tests, we shoot a lot of stuff, including things that are rather unorthodox, such as this Liberty Civil Defense 9mm plus P50 grain, that's less than half the bullet, weight, advertised velocity of 2,040 feet per second. When we did a test a while back comparing defensive ammo through short barrels, we had some impressive numbers come from this stuff, so we decided to dive a little deeper. This is all from an article, and if <laughs> to warn you in advance, the footage may not be exciting in this video, but I recorded it just so you guys could see it. But we're going to take a deeper dive into this civil defense stuff and see what you really get out of it. Coming up next on GB Guns. So first off, how do we examine the ammunition? Well, we want to see what the consistency is like, what kind of velocity you get out of it, and use that and some math to figure out what kind of energy it is. Because after all, shooting something is really a matter of transferring energy. It's like throwing a rock at something. When you hit it, the damage done is how hard that rock hits. Modern projectiles, such as these, enhance that even further. Everyone knows hollow points, and these are a fragmenting hollow point. They break off into various pieces, and then the core continues on forward for the penetration aspect of it. However, it really comes down to how hard you're hitting the target. So, we did a collection of common carry barrels. Now, this is the SIG 365XL um, macro comp. I've got it on an XL grip module, but I grabbed this one because it has a 3.1 inch barrel. This is the same barrel length as your P365, your Springfield Hellcat, all of those new micro compacts. Bullets need velocity to have energy, they need barrels to develop velocity. This is pretty darn short at 3.1 inches, but it's become popular. We then step it up just a touch to three and a quarter inches, an interesting size, partially because I just love this gun. This is the Bull Armory SAS 2 Ultralight, uh, but at just 0.15 inches longer of barrel, does that make a difference or not? Should three and a quarter inch become the new standard? Then we go to 3.7 inch barrel. This is a SIG 365XL uh, Icarus Precision Slide, but this barrel length is of course on this, the 365XL as well as the Hellcat Pro and is sort of becoming the replacement of the traditional four inch standard. Now this is the TSOS USA Zagana PX9 Gen 3 Duty, but your Glock 19, pretty much everything out there for a long time had a four inch nine mil barrel. So much so, in fact, that if you look up the SAMI specs, the specifications to which ammunition must be manufactured in the United States, four inches is what they recommend for a nine mil barrel because this had been the norm. And what happens if we go past that? This Graham Power Excalibur has a 4.99 inch barrel, effectively a five inch barrel, long known as the favorite length for competition shooters, not just because of sight radius and softer recoil, but getting a little more energy. And I can tell you as a guy who used to compete that I always admired how the guys with the longer barrel seemed to knock targets over the steel targets faster and harder than I could with a shorter barrel. When I first got a five inch barrel, I too enjoyed knocking it over. We'll take a look at the actual science behind that. And then lastly, how far can you go? This is the Century Arms Draco 9S out of Romania. It's got a 11 inch barrel. 11 inches is kind of considered about the max where 9 mil starts to peter out. Uh, once you go past that to say a 16 inch like your pistol caliber carbine, generally you're slowing the bullet down because the friction in the bore between the bullet and the rifling is enough to sap some of that energy. So with an 11 inch barrel on this Draco 9S, what do we get out of this? So to test all of this, and here comes the boring footage. I highly recommend you guys just check out the link to the article on gbgunsdepot.com. That will have all the conclusions. But what I did was I put five rounds of each load. No, this is not defensive ammo, but as a 115 grain, 1150 feet per second load, this is our baseline. So we use this as a control. Five rounds of it, chronographed it, calculated the energy. Five rounds of the civil defense, chronographed calculated the energy. I also shot for groups just out of curiosity. Now there's a lot of human error potential when you're shooting for groups, but 
why not? If I'm going to shoot through a chronograph, especially some premium ammunition like this, might as well try to group it. So here comes that footage. Grab some popcorn <laughs> and we'll get to it. The instructions on this chronograph require that you be at least 10 feet away. And since it's defensive ammo, we're going to be shooting from seven yards. Our chronograph is a little bit finicky. Sometimes it likes to read meters per second, regardless of which switch I push. I currently have it on feet per second. We'll find out. So I'll be shooting from seven yards back at that target. We can see how the stuff prints and we'll see the velocity. I'll also be calling it out because these are my field notes for the test. First up, PMC Bronze as our baseline through a 3.1 inch barrel. In this case, a SIG uh, X Macro slide setup. Three twenty one. Uh, that sounds like meters per second. Three ten. Three twenty five. Three eighteen or nineteen, maybe. And three twelve. Now for the Liberty Civil Defense 50 grain plus P through our 3.1 inch. Five ninety four. Six oh five. Six ten. 606 and 601. I will say that Liberty was much, much softer to shoot than the PMZ Bronze 115 grain. Kind of interesting. Next up, we have our Bull Armory SAS 2 Ultralight. Spectacular gun, but a three and a quarter inch barrel. Starting with the PMC Bronze, let's see if that 0.15 extra of a barrel really shows us much difference. What kind of difference do we get with regular ball ammo? What kind of difference do we get with the Liberty Plus P? 317. 315. 300. 310. and 312. The Liberty 50 grain plus P ammunition through the SAS 2 ultralight. Really curious to hear your guys' thoughts and now's the time to do it. Let me know, do you think that 0.15 of a barrel really makes a difference when there's plus P? You guys have seen the numbers before I have, so I don't remember what the average was on the 3.1, but here we go for the 3.25. 597, 599, interesting that I'm hitting lower, 612, 602, 602 and 602 again. And the recoil was more significant in this gun with the Liberty ammunition, whereas with the macro slide, it was softer in the Liberty ammunition than the ball ammunition. Interesting stuff. Bummer that I just fouled up the cardboard. I want you guys to also notice that we're seeing different points of impact as we change between ammo. That's something we try to show you in the what's for dinner test. Uh, doesn't seem to always be the case with all guns and all ammo, but it does exist. Now we've got the PMC bronze 115 grain running through the 3.7 inch barrel of a 365XL. 1061. Looks like we're now back in feet per second. Thank you, chronograph. 1086. 1055. 
1080. And 1083 with a pretty nice group. I'm pretty happy with that. Sorry about the backlit sun situation, guys. It's December in Oregon, and that's the angle the sun comes at us at. SIG 365XL 3.7 inch barrel with the 50 grain plus P Liberty ammunition. Let's see what kind of difference we get in velocity and energy. Twenty one oh nine. Twenty eighty seven. Twenty one hundred. Twenty sixty eight. And 1983, also, I think a pretty good group. I'm happy with that. It is worth noting that the Liberty hit point of aim, point of impact in the 3.7 inch barrel, but it did not in the shorter barrels. Um, that can come down to the way the barrel is made, the twist rate, the, the length of the barrel, of course, but just like with rifles, Every round and every barrel interact differently, which is why it's important to know and understand these things about your gun. Moving on up to the four incher, we have the SDS Imports PX9 Gen 3 Duty. Do have an RMR on it. I hope it's zeroed. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. It's been a while. I want you to keep in mind that when looking at firearms and ammunition and claims of velocity, in fact, for this particular box, it's supposed to be 1150 feet per second that that's according to sammy meant for a four inch barrel that is the normal barrel length anything longer or shorter is when you get deviations some manufacturers will tell you the barrel length they test in others don't let's see what we get here and let me hope that this dot is on looks like it's decent 1093 1063, and I forgot how soft and easy this gun is to shoot. 1086. 1082. And 1077. So a little below the advertised velocity out of this four inch barrel. And we're back with the PX9 Gen 3 Duty from Tsosh and SDS Imports. Now with the 50 grain plus P Liberty Ammunition. Twenty sixty five. Twenty forty seven. Twenty eighty five. Man, I wish every shooting day went as well as this is. 2086. And 2034. Also very, very soft recoiling in this gun. Now we're up to five inch, which is the norm for 45, and a little bit on the long side for nine mil with the Grand Power Excalibur PMC Bronze. Eleven sixty two. Eleven twenty. Eleven forty five. I threw that one. Sorry, guys. Eleven sixteen. Eleven fifty nine. And the ultimate big boy combo, the Grand Power Excalibur 5 inch with the Liberty Plus P 50 grain. What do you guys think? Are we going to meet or exceed the advertised velocity of 2,040 feet per second with this? I'm betting we exceed it. Curious to feel how the recoil is on this and also to see if we have a different point of impact than we did with the PMC Bronze. Twenty one thirty three, twenty one eighty seven, 
2179. 2156. 2197 definitely hit uh, high and left there most of the time and what if you go bigger we've got the draco 9s and i've got a can on it here just to be polite because i can haha -ha. i don't know the barrel length off the top of my head i'll have to look it up and post that in the article but let's see what happens when you go to one of these large format pistols now before i do this our range here has some crazy rules so I'm going to post it on here because some of those folks watch our videos. Any firearm using a foregrip, shoulder stock, or stabilizer brace must use the rifle range. No foregrip, no stock, no stabilizer brace. I'm going to iron sight this and freehand it. And now with the Draco 9S, I'm going to use the iron sights here. I've got them held all the way back. Hopefully that works for the seven yard shot. Freehanding it, the Blazer Brass. Twelve ten. Twelve forty nine. And as you can see I'm hitting low and right. These sights are not zeroed and obviously not meant for this distance. Twelve thirty three. 12.17 and 12.39. Let's see what the plus P does. Should have brought a sling for this thing. It would have made it a lot easier to aim. So now we've got the Liberty plus P in the Draco 9S with a can. Twenty four eighty nine. That is screaming. An error. Twenty four eighty nine. Another error. <laughs> I am getting a little wide and right on my its. Let's see if I try to hold a little high left just to get it there. 24-34, and our last shot, 23-58. I am really curious to see what kind of energy numbers come out of that. If you're still with us after all of that boring non-action footage, I appreciate you. That means you are here to learn something, not here for entertainment. Go ahead and let's put the word quagmire in the comment section please comment with quagmire if you watched the video this far i'm really curious to see who sat through all of that footage anyways the conclusions are up in that article there are some impressive numbers coming out of this liberty civil defense we didn't shoot ballistics gel because well there's always a complaint if it's clear ballistics gel then it looks pretty but people say oh that's not like real flesh if you use the classic ballistics gelatin then you can't see the wound cavity because the stuff's not clear. If you use a meat target, it looks really cool and makes for great entertainment. However, it's really difficult to measure. So this was the most empirical way I could think of to measure this stuff and see what kind of a distance, a difference there is between this Liberty Civil Defense 50 gram plus P and your standard 115 grain load. Thanks for watching.